If I was to ask you what your child has been doing lately that just drives you insane, what is the first thing that comes to mind? <laughs> and if you're brave enough, add it to the comments because this is what we're going to talk about today. These beautiful parental triggers and how our children's behaviors and how we react to it could actually help us heal. Uh, that's what we're talking about today. For those who don't know me, my name is Danielle C. Baker. I am the founder and CEO of Being Connected, and I'm also a registered early childhood educator with over 20 years experience in the field. So I do help parents and educators navigate the reality of what it's like to uh, raise healthy children nowadays. Now, uh, don't get it twisted when you're working with me. We have to uh, put the child's needs first. So we're going to have to put our pride and ego aside and let's get to it. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Talk to Danielle podcast. I am your host, Danielle C. Baker. Before we get started, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to whichever channel you're listening or watching from. I do appreciate the support that you give me for the work that I do. And of course, this is new with season two. This episode is brought to you by the Self-Esteem Doctor Online Academy with this amazing Dr. Simone Alicia. There's a wealth of resources uh, that can help with your child's self-esteem and confidence. So I will add the link in the comments and in the description so you can have a look at that. So we're going to jump right in. Today we're talking about parental triggers and how they can actually help us find what it is that we need to heal inside of us to uh, stop being so reactive to our children's behaviors. So for those who are not quite sure what a parental trigger is, it's usually uh, a reaction that we have, and it can be a very sudden, very irrational spur of uh, anger. And we just get really upset at our child just like this. We just snap. Uh, and it's, it is sudden. It's irrational. We have no idea why we reacted. And sometimes we feel guilty about it. And it usually is uh, triggered by some of the children's behaviors, usually something like a tantrum, uh, whining. They could be disrespecting whatever disrespect means to you. Uh, they could be disrespecting you or they're disobeying you. Those are some of the, the trauma, the, the behaviors that they could have. But I also want to mention there's some behaviors that we're not actually talking about that we should. We attach tri parental triggers to negative behaviors in our children. Sometimes it has nothing to do with our child. And one of those things could be something like you have health issues, you're stressed out, you're going through a really hard time, you're overwhelmed. Um, so it has nothing with the, to do with the child's behavior. It's just that you're not in the right state to handle the little challenge that your child is giving you. It could also have to do with you being worried about your child's development. If your child, let's say, is not speaking and, and developing, and the language skills are not developing the way you've been reading about, you, you could start getting upset when your child is not talking and you'd be like, use your words, say it. You know, you'll get really angry and aggressive and traumatize your child because you're worried about their development. Um, but this is where it gets interesting. It could also be triggered by the fact that your child is happy. And this is where it gets messed up. Uh, your child is playful. Your child is acting silly. Your child is being a child. They're just happy, go lucky, nothing worries them. They don't have a care in the world. And that can trigger you because of something you did not get as a child. That's where we're getting at with those triggers. So, uh, those are some of the triggers that we don't talk about a lot. So when you start getting triggered by the fact that your child is having fun and you hate it, <laughs> you start wondering what's wrong with you as a parent, right? And this is what happens. You will react a lot of the times. You'll just be yelling, shouting, your lash out at your child. Uh, or it could be the complete opposite. You will shut down, walk away, get, go silent because you don't want to overreact. You don't want to shut out. You just completely go into, you know, when they say fright and flight, faint and freeze some some people will freeze they just they can't react at all you could be compelled to punish this is something that I grew up with as a parental triggers my mom's hand would just go up and we would get the backhand um, those are triggers so the punishment could be that um, you can just shame your your child say what's wrong with you why are you doing this you're not a baby why aren't you talking you know things like this We've we've gone over this a million times. Those are some examples of how you would react. It's not something you would normally do, 
but it does lead us those those triggers and these reactions do lead us into going against our parental values the way that we want to raise our children the way that we want to show up for our children those triggers actually do quite the opposite so we react even more because of that what we have to understand is that our child's behavior has nothing to do with it it's just that we are not at ease with our own emotional discomfort and our child is showing us something that we can't deal with and that's why it's coming out um so like i said earlier that you know those those triggers prevent us from being the parent that we actually want to be for our children and most of the time we react that way because we were raised in an environment where it wasn't safe for us to express our emotions safely, right? So if your child is throwing a tantrum because they're tired or they're hungry, you it wasn't safe for you when you were growing up to do something like that, right? Your parents would react as well. You would get punished. Um, so this is basically it. This is why you're reacting. If If you weren't allowed to behave that way as a child, your child should not be allowed to react that way. This is how we often bring up that topic when, with our children. When I was your age, I wasn't allowed to do this. When I was your age, I was. if I talked to my parents that way, I would get it beaten. We're, we keep bringing that up to our children, but it has. how well did that work for you? Why are you doing it to your child, right? And that's what a trigger is. It's irrational. And uh, if you were cool, cool, calm, and collected, you would be able to reason that yourself out of that behavior, but you can't. It's this instant, just a snap. So why are we reacting that way? And, and that's usually it. It's some childhood trauma that we have gone through. We couldn't behave that way. We weren't allowed to behave that way. We didn't know the rules of being a child that the adults imposed. We just had to do it. And we discovered them as we went along. Uh, so it wasn't safe but we didn't know how to behave and that's why we react that way we don't want our children to react that way even though you're not going to beat your child or you're not going to shame your child you actually do it because they're behaving in a way that you 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 didn't know how to cope with um so what you have to understand is the kids also don't know what a power struggle is you know, we often often relate our the child behavior that triggers us as the fact that our child is testing us, they're doing this on purpose. They wanna make us miserable. They wanna torture us, right? Children are not born with that notion. They just have a need that needs to be met and you're not listening. You're not meeting that need. So that's how they react because they don't know how to process their emotion. You're supposed to teach them that. So there's no power struggle in the beginning we'll take that we'll associate that as a power struggle because we can't cope with our reaction we can't be at fault we can't show our child that we're not perfect so we will blame tra transfer the blame on them right and later on if your child because they can in the in the tween years and the, the teen years or even younger there's some five-year-olds that will do it now if they are doing it to give you a hard time just know that you're you're the one who taught them that if you keep telling them that that's what they're doing they're going to believe that that's what they're doing you're teaching them how to manipulate you so if there is a power struggle later on it wasn't from birth it was taught it was learned behavior now remember that that's why we need to work on those triggers <laughs> um so why do we get those triggers? Why do we react that way is a lot of the times it's, we just don't know how to handle our emotions because we've never, we've never had anyone to model that behavior for us as children, right? We're only repeating what our parents used to do. We've never had a parent who processed this properly and showed us how to manage our own emotions, how to manage our behavior. So it was never taught. We don't know how to handle it. So of course, we're going to react the same way that our, our parents reacted. It's a trauma response. Uh, it's a defense mechanism. So that's what, that's how you learned it. And that's how you're doing it now. It's just a habit. We basically are just feeling threatened by the way that our children are expressing their emotions. 
that's what it is because we weren't able to uh, express it ourselves when we were young and we may still not be able to express it as an adult when our child is doing it and we feel threatened by that because they're doing what we we've, we've never been able to do so that's why it will uh will snap like that if you are reacting just the way your parents are reacting uh you're, you're you're passing that on to your child you've created that pattern your parents did it to you because their parents did it to them and now you're doing it to to your child and we have to break that pattern and this is what this episode is all about is this is how your child is going to help you heal through your triggers is their behavior triggers you and that's when you know that that's what uh, you need to work on so that you're not passing that on to your child so here are some facts that because we, we we tend to get really hard on ourselves when we do have parental triggers when they we snap at our children we're very hard on ourselves. There's not a lot of ex explaining to them. Not a lot of people that are talking about this, but what you have to understand is your child's behavior has nothing to do with your reaction. So if your reaction is to yell at your child, um, your child's behavior has nothing to do with you yelling. You need to understand that uh, your yelling is a reaction, right? And now that you feel so bad that you yelled at your child, you didn't handle the situation very well, but you don't want to admit it because you don't want to show weakness, uh, you're going to turn it around and say, well, if my child would stop behaving that way, I'll, I wouldn't have to yell. So now you're gaslighting. <laughs> it's, it's just horrible. You're blame shaming, you know, you're switching it around and now you're making the child's, the child's fault. So now you're creating a trauma and a wound to your child. So we, that's where we need to stop it. So just know that your child's behavior has nothing to do with your behavior. You've attached an emotion to that child. Your child's behavior is affecting you because of a meaning, a meaning that you attach to it. So I mentioned the power struggle earlier. If you attach the child's behavior to, oh, they're just trying to manipulate me. They're trying to torture me. They're trying to make me upset. They're testing me you've attached that that doesn't that your child needs something from you but what you're associating it it is you're not the boss of me i am the parent you've attached that to it so you could have a room full of adults with a child throwing a tantrum and not every adult in that room is going to think that the child is doing that to torture them you are the one who thinks that another one will just say the child is tired another one will say the child could be hungry or another one will say, your child's been calling you for the last half hour, telling you their stomach is upset, right? There's so, but for you, you you taking it as a personal attack just because of what you attach to it. So that's what happens. Uh, it will leave you, once you do have a trigger and you react to it, it'll leave you really, you, you get so frustrated. You can feel helpless. This is something that I felt with one of my child. One of my children is um I just kept he just kept crying and crying and crying, screaming, crying, not a little cry. And no matter what I did, I couldn't soothe him. And so I felt so helpless that I couldn't help him. And so it triggered me every time they he starts screaming like that, it would just I, I would actually be I can't do this anymore. Like I would actually retreat. After a while, they would just get to me it's too much that I cannot. What kind of parent am I? You know, what kind of mother am I if I can't even soothe my my own baby? So that that is an example of feeling helpless, and it's the worst feeling in the world. And your children, or oh, if you're very, you know, if you prideful person, uh, feeling helpless is one of the worst feelings in the world when it comes to your children you can feel overwhelmed right um all of these emotions is, it will lead you back to a childhood trauma there's some kind of shame that you've lived through in your childhood trauma and this is why you're reacting that's your trigger this is why your child's behavior and your reaction to it is what's going to help you heal um another thing that you need to understand it's not always related to a childhood trauma it's never and again not a child's behavior it could just be that stress makes it impossible to control yourself so when you're going through a really 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 stressful time your reaction will be stronger right if you're tired and you're stressed you will react 
on things that you normally wouldn't react. So if your child whines, let's say, and you just choose to ignore it, so you're not giving them the attention, there'll be a day where you're so tired, you're so fed up, you're so stressed out, something bad happened with the other parent, something bad happened at work, whatever it is, you just got some bad news. And for some reason, that one day where your child whines just makes you snap. So it, again, it has nothing to do with this, the, your child's behavior. Your child does this every day. You choose to ignore it. But today, you're not ignoring it. So stress has a huge factor on this. There are some days you can let it slide, and there's some days that, no, it's non-negotiable. That will confuse your child, too, if you're not consistent. So stress is another reason why uh, it could trigger you. Uh, and it, the one th something that's very important here, you have to understand that you are not your reaction. I teach children this a lot, and I, I help parents and, and teachers with this as well, is the child is not their behavior, right? So if the, there's no such thing as a bad child. There's just a bad behavior or bad decision, right? It's the same as a parent. You just had a bad reaction that doesn't make you a bad parent. So you are not your reaction, okay? You're not a bad parent. Uh, what's really cool about this, that if you could keep that in mind, now you're not a bad parent, you just had a bad reaction, is that that reaction can be changed because it's not who you are, right? It can be changed. You just need to want to. You, you're going to want to have to heal. And there's a lot of work involved in that. It's not going to be easy. So you need to invest the time to, to do it so you're not passing it on to your child. Uh, your triggers and the way you react to it are just stress responses. They're defense mechanisms. So you just have to keep that in mind. You don't need to have more self-control. A lot of people say, I need to get myself in check. You know, I need to control myself. You don't need more self-control. Uh, your reactions are not a character flaw. So again, you are not powerless to change. It's not a character flaw. It's not a personality disorder it's not a personality trait so you're not powerless you can change you just have to want to change because it's not going to be easy you need to change a pattern that is generational it's not going to be easy you got to face your demons and get it out of the way so your child doesn't have to do it for you so your brain will continue to react the same way until you teach it a new way to react this is what you have to understand. This is where you're going to need the support. And this is why there's the work involved is you just have to keep telling yourself when you're beating yourself up for uh, reacting badly towards your child's behavior is to say, I'm not a bad parent. This can, this is just a stress response. I can change this. Uh, but you need to teach your brain to do it differently so that you're not reacting the same way. No, you can change your behavior as well. Uh, so this is where you have a need that was not met as a child that's that you've carried through you some trauma, uh, some stress that you've been kind of burying deep down inside of you. Your child is bringing all of that up. So you need to meet your own needs so that you can meet your child's needs. This is what you um, you have to remember. So to heal. How do we do that? Your child has showed you exactly where you need to heal. So this is what you have to do now. You need to understand the root cause. Why are you reacting? Why is this triggering you? What's behind that? So uh, a lot of the times it'll be because of it. It's a trauma response. I've said that before. So uh, your child is resurfacing some old wounds that you worked really hard at forgetting. Right. And now this beautiful human being that you love unconditionally just brings it all up. And this is why your child can help you heal, because you will actually do the work for your child. If it was your spouse, if it was your partner, if it was the other parent, if it was your, your own parents, your, your friends telling you you needed to change, uh, that would not necessarily go over well before your child. It's something it's a, it's a good motivation. Uh so there's some trauma response to your root cause. Try to look back and see why, this, what that stems from. And I will explain how you could do that a little bit later. I'm just going to go over what the root cause can be. So it could be a trauma response. It could also be a challenging uh, societal message. That's what they call it. A challenging societal message. If you're looking at uh, television shows, movies, uh, what's shown on, on social media, and even cartoons, the cartoons that you're watching with your children, video games, whatever, they all make it out to be that the parenting is a constant struggle. Okay. It's not. 
it's a choice to make it a struggle. So because we are constantly bombarded with this image that parenting is hard, your children are going to drive you crazy. They're going to give you all this gray hair. Uh, you know, they're impossible that you, you become the victim in, in this, right? It's a choice. It doesn't have to be hard. Parenting really doesn't have to be hard if you get the help, if you get the support, if you know what you need help with and and ask for it. That's the, the challenging part is asking for the support, admitting that you need help. And it's not help, it's backup. I actually did an episode on that. If you want to look it up, uh, parental backup. And you're not asking for help, you're asking for backup. You're still in control. You're still the one making the uh, the decisions. You're just asking for reinforcement, right? So that's one thing as well that can trigger you is the fact that you are going in expecting your children to drive you crazy because that's all we see on TV. If kids are constantly fighting. That's a conversation you can have with your children as well to change the pattern when you see that their their television shows that was fairly big with my kids uh, watching uh, Disney Channel and stuff where the, 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 you know, the younger sister is torturing the older kids, always getting them in trouble. Uh, and I, I would say to my kids, is that normal? Is that you know is that nice and then say no okay so why what could we do different what could she do or what could they do differently to change that because that shouldn't be normal right and it's a choice if we make it normal so keep that in mind it could also see uh, look at your personal insight that's another one to understand your triggers look back at your own life how did your parents handle it when you had that behavior so if your child is whining how did your parents handle it when you were whining as a child? You may not remember because whining is usually for younger kids, but that could be a reason. If your child is not eating their vegetables at dinner and you're fighting with them for an hour, having them sit at the table, you're not moving until you eat those last three peas in your plate, giving that as an example. Well, that's definitely something that you went through as a child. So how, how did your parents? So you're going to realize that it's your own personal insight. This is what you know. So this is what you're passing down to your child. Why are you reacting that way? How did your parents handle it when you behaved that way? And understand it's not your parents' fault, just like it's not your fault. We just don't know. We're not taught this. So your parents did it because their parents did it. Now you're doing it and you're teaching your child how to do it for their children. This is where we need to change it. Um, your parents had their own trauma. They were dealing with it. You triggered them just like your children are triggered and they reacted just like you're reacting right now. So how did your parents handle when you had those behaviors? It's another way you can understand why you're being triggered. This respect and disobedience is usually very big because those are, are kind of the core of family values. So if um, obedience, Obeying your parents was really big. It could be cultural. It could just be generational as well. And you disobeyed. Uh, you could get spanked. Uh, that was a common thing back in the day. Uh, you may have those reactions. This is something that I had. If we did something that my mom didn't like, it was just automatic. Her trigger was just a hand up and we get the back of the hand. That's just, I was a reaction. She didn't even think about it. It was half a second and we get... All right, it puts it back in check and, and we're good to go. You know, it's extreme, but that's what it was. And so, you know, how how did they handle it? And why are you passing that down? Is what I'm saying. <laughs> it's how you interpret it. Your, your parents' behavior to your behavior. Your parents' reaction to your behavior. You've attached an emotion to that. And that's how you interpreted it. And this is why it's passing on to your child. The reason why it's, it's only an, an um, interpretation of the behavior or the reaction is if you had siblings, you were raised the same way. You had the same reaction from your parents, but it may not be a trigger for your brother or sister. It is a trigger for you because you've attached an emotion to it and you just buried that deep inside of you. And now it's resurfacing with your child's behavior. But your brothers and sisters may not have that. So it's really something that you interpreted with the, your parents' reaction, or it's something that, an emotion that you re, um, attach to it. Once you can kind of understand the root cause of your trigger and why you react that way, now that you know your triggers, you, you go and get the support that you need. Okay, so 
again, is that backup. It's not help, it's backup. You know that there's something that you need to work on. You're going to need support because you're not going to be able to teach your brain how to react differently because that's all you know. You're going to need somebody to help you. Ideally, your partner or the other parent should be your person to help you. And this is, again, ideally, when you have a healthy relationship, if the partner notices you struggling or knows that you're about to lose it, they would just automatically just softly step in and deal with the handle the child's behavior so that you could take a step back, breathe, gain back control of your emotions so that you can step back in. It's not the other parent telling you that you're not a good parent, right? It's not your partner telling you that you don't know how to handle your child. We take that as a personal attack and we, we blow up even more, but that's because we were not taught that a partnership is supposed to be that way. There are days where your partner will be triggered and you will step in gently, give them time to breathe, step in, manage the behavior. You're supporting each other, ideally. Right. So we got to teach your children to do that so that they can have healthy relationships. Um, find there's so many parenting groups out there, support groups that you can have. Just talking about it can help a lot. Most of the time we do this alone. Right. Parenting is not supposed to be hard because back in the day we had an old village helping us. We've lost that village. Now we got to do everything on our own. And it's we're actually shamed if we ask for help. We're bad parents if we ask for help. That's kind of how we've been conditioned now. So just talking about it sometimes with other parents and realizing you're not the only one going through these struggles can be so helpful. So keep that in mind as well. Join those support groups, uh, you know, get therapy. If you had some, some severe trauma in your life, you're going to need that help. Get some counseling so you can change those behaviors. So you can actually help yourself heal so that you are not passing that on to your child. Uh, and this is where I'm going to explain how you identify those triggers. This is when I work with children, I will call it the big T's and the little T's. And it's the same with the adults. So your triggers, the T is for triggers. So the big T's and the little T's. So the big T's could be coming from severe trauma or abuse. It could be from a sudden death of a parent. You've lost someone very close Um so again, it's an emotion that you attach to a very traumatic experience. Those are extremes. Those are your big T's, right? And then you have little T's. <laughs> so your little triggers, it has to do with uh, non-life-threatening injuries, illnesses, or even if you've been bullied, those would be triggers as well. If you feel that your child is bullying you, that will bring up some emotions that uh, you've been hiding for, for a very long time. But uh, when I talk about just to give you an example of what a trigger would be. If when you were a child, you were at the park playing, you fell off the monkey bars, you fell off a play structure and dislocated your shoulder, right? You've attached a, a pain to that experience and it traumatized you because you had to go to the hospital. The way your parents handled it may have traumatized you. They yelled at you for hurting yourself as opposed to caring for you, making sure you're okay and, and soothing you. Uh, so that will be a trigger when you see your child at the park doing something that you deem unsafe you will automatically yell get down from there you're gonna get hurt that's a trigger that's a little key the big triggers are something else so so look at that and how it triggered you how did it trigger you when you were little and how does it trigger you now okay because you know now you should know You've attached the fact that playing on structures will have you dislocate your, as a child, you're playing on the structure, you fall, you dislocate your shoulder. As an adult, you are able to understand that if your child is on a play structure and falls, it doesn't mean they're going to dislocate their shoulder. They may get a bruise. They may fall just perfectly fine and not get hurt. So you have to understand that that was your experience. It doesn't have to be your child's experience. So don't expect your children going to the park to dislocate their shoulders. This is just an example of it. So how did your parents uh, handle that as well, right? If you would have needed, that would, that would be the most terrifying. If you've uh, 
you're playing at the park, you're having a great time, you're playing with your siblings, you're getting along for the first time ever. And then this bark, this dark dog comes out of nowhere and bites you. That is traumatizing. So now when you're playing with your friends, as you get older, you kind of get nervous. You see a dog, you get nervous. Your child sees you get nervous with the dog and uh, they get nervous. So you're passing that on. Those are triggers. And so if your child is around a dog, you're going to be like, no, All right? Now you're traumatizing your child. So how do you react to it now? Do you yell at your child because they could get hurt? Uh, do you completely step back and, and walk out of the house because you're like, I can't handle this right now. I need to get some air. And you walk away. That's another response. So you're in survival mode. So it could be fight, flight, freeze, or faint, right? It could be one of those. Um, and then look back and see, okay, these are behaviors that your parents modeled, right? And they're also coping mechanisms for your life experiences. Like I mentioned, you got hurt when you fell off the structure and now you're just, you're, it's a response. It's a coping mechanism. If I don't climb up a structure, I can't fall. I can't hurt myself. So don't blame yourself for these reactions. These are, those are perfectly uh, normal reactions, but they will help you heal. You will know where to get, where it started from. How did your parents react to it? How are you reacting to it from your own experience? And uh, how are you passing that on? We got to break that pattern. So uh, get the support that you can. There's so much that we can do. I can help as well. I'm going to leave you with that as uh, is just every time your child triggers you, their behavior triggers you, look at it now as what is my child showing me? What do I need to heal so that I'm not asking my child to heal for me? And do the work from there. Identify what the root cause is. Is it something that's deep rooted? Is it something just that's expected from you from the society? Uh, is it your own insight? Well, it was like that when I was growing up, so it should be like that for my child. And, and they sit back and going, well, wait, no, I didn't like that as a child. Why would I do it to my child? And I kind of find that balance in it. Uh, and then once you are able to identify, get the support that you need, there's nothing wrong with that. You will be helping your child. There's absolutely nothing wrong. So just remember your child's behavior has nothing to do with your reaction. And your reaction is not who you are. Uh, you're just having a bad moment. Let's fix it so you don't have another bad moment. Your brain is going to keep doing the same thing until you show it to do something different. This is where the support needs. That's where the work needs to go in. Um, if you're constantly being triggered and you don't do anything about it, then it's a choice. Just remember that it's a choice because you can change that behavior. It's not who you are. It's what you've developed. It's a muscle that you work. You can change that behavior. So just remember that. I'm going to leave you with that. If you have any other questions, just uh, kept it big still because there's so many different situations. I, uh, contact me. I can do Q&As. I can go live uh, on social media. I can help out with that. I can help your child as well. And don't forget to check out uh, the uh, Steam Doctor Online Academy. There's some great resources for that as well. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to whichever channel you're listening or watching from. And until next time, stay safe. Stay awesome. And we'll talk soon.